hello and welcome back to another data news of the week you know how this goes this is the video where we go through all the different news stories that have happened this week that we can squeeze into any other videos and today i'm going to talk about a story straight away that i've already kind of talked about in the past we've got a bit more information on it in regards to samsung 980 pro finally samsung have worked on releasing a heatsink for this device a number of you who have been considering this ssd not just ups fibers but a lot of people that work with regards to post-production and editing and even pc gamers of course look at this ssd and go that is some great performance at a great price where's the heatsink and i can't believe it's taken a year for samsung to knock this out but finally they have an official heatsink for this ssd along with this they are including uh, firmware enhancements they are saying this heatsink and those improvements um, are taken into account ps5 gamers indeed a lot of the focus of this new heatsink and the design of it and what they talked about uh, uh, the firmware upgrades and stuff like that are very much in the wheelhouse of ps5 gamers there now this is from the looks of things going to be a bundled um, heatsink here. I don't think you're going to be able to get this on its own. I've seen no evidence of that. And they're releasing in a 1 and 2 TB version at $249 and $449 RRP. So again, looking that against the RRP of the 1 and 2 to, uh, TB device, you're looking at about $30 to $40 on top for that heatsink. But of course, there's going to be a lot of flexibility of the price on that. The design of it is very you know it's quite a compact little heatsink there so it's going to go in that m2 bay of the ps5 but on top of that the kind of structure of it it's got the standard vents along the top but it's also perforated all the way through to assist airflow flow through that negative uh, pressure design of the ps5 there. again of course as soon as it's available we'll get one here we'll be bench testing it against a number of the other uh, gamer heatsinks right now to see how it compares but again i'm glad to see this from samsung but my god they took their time, didn't they? Next up, back into the wonderful world of NAS, and we're going to head back to Acer Store with the announcement of ADM version 4. That's right, the latest version of their software is now fully available. ADM 4 for the Acer Store platform there, and again, this goes towards your Nimbus stores, your Locker stores, your Drive stores. All of those systems there are going to benefit from this, and it includes a myriad of improvements from handling of multimedia there in the G, uh, graphical user interface and the individual applications, a better designed uh, GUI, and the overall design of all the different windows and passing between them, and them being a little bit more responsive as well. There's improvements in the search functionality, both within applications and generally within the uh, user interface uh, there from the desktop or within your web browser at least uh, improved website hosting as well apparently features have been improved in there as well as handling of samba uh, improvements there as well there's lots of little tiny background stuff and even improvements that have integrated into some of those third-party apps too so again we are going to be revisiting the subject of drive store in the next week or so we're going to be looking at some of the non-pro versions out there so it's going to be really interesting to see just how well this new version of adm runs on those more cost-effective systems and of course how it looks on the locker store series as well so look forward to that next week and now we go from a hop skip and a jump over to the subject of routers and possibly one of the beefiest most beast mode routers i've seen in quite a while we're quite used to talking about wi-fi 6 here on the channel and talking about a lot of routers with that 15 or 16 different antennas like the one just behind me there but this is from netgear and this is a move into wi-fi 6 we haven't seen quite a lot of fully published and available solutions that support this and this is the Orbi RBKE960. Yes, I had to look at my notes just off camera to remember that. It's not the most catchy model ID there, but the Orbi series from Netgear has been kind of their prosumer um, wi uh, mesh Wi-Fi 6 series and again, by no means affordable let's be realistic the orbi is kind of your tippy toeing out of home and well into business there this will support wi-fi 6e so for those that aren't aware wi-fi 6e is the uh, traditional wi-fi uh, 5 and 6 take advantage of 2.4 and 5 gigahertz bands as does wi-fi 6 and makes the most out of it 6e utilizes the next frequency the wi-fi uh, sorry the 6 gigahertz frequency now this um mesh system that are Arrives in both a hub and individual satellites will arrive with support of of course uh, 2.4 gigahertz 5 gigahertz and 6 gigahertz but it has a fourth band there a dedicated 5 gigahertz band for mesh connectivity to the other little satellite modules it's a 12 antenna system which is huge within this closed system it doesn't have external antenna they're all built in uh, built into the chassis in a strategic manner 
but this system also arrives with a 10 gigabit WAN port. That's right. So once you're connecting the internet into your home or business environment, this will allow you to patch in at 10 gigabit, 1000 megabytes of connectivity, not megabits, megabytes. So again, mwah, beautiful stuff there, but it doesn't stop. There is also 2.5 GBE, there's a 2.5 GBE um, uh, LAN port on here, and three 1 GBE LAN ports as well. So there's a huge amount of both wireless connectivity and wide connectivity going straight into there. Is it all good? There is one little blip on the horizon there, the price tag. It looks like it's going to be knocking around with an RRP of one hub and two satellites for $1,500. That's a lot of whack for a router system. So again, I said prosumer, but a price tag like that is pushing it hefty, hefty, hefty into the business class area there. And of course, Wi-Fi 6E is very much in its infancy with practically no mainstream devices out there in the market right now arriving with support of Wi-Fi 6E. So this really is a plan ahead kind of a product, but it looks like they are looking for full availability and release in December 2021. Finally this week, we have seen quite a few brands get nice and loud about DDR5 memory. Now, DDR5 isn't strictly new. We've seen it pop up a lot of times in graphics card use, but as traditional RAM sticks that we utilize in our PCs, our laptops, our consoles, our NASes, DDR5 is practically nowhere. Luckily, a bunch of brands are now starting to really push forward on this. Now, although Samsung, um, I talked about in, uh, on NAS Compares on the blog earlier in the week, what I want to talk about today Today is a data. A data have launched their series of UDIM and SODIM DDR5 modules. Now these are arriving in 8GB and above. Again, they are going to be working later on into ECC and you know registered memory, RDIM and stuff like that. But these are uh, going to be running in up to 48. Um, uh, 4,800 megahertz, which is more than twice that of DDR4 in most conventional respects. It also does it at a better efficiency level with power consumption at 1.1 volts. And they are saying that by 2023, uh, DDR5 will be the priority. It will outstretch DDR4 in terms of application and requirements and largely dominate almost exclusively by 2020, uh, 2026. Now, Again, as I mentioned, they're not the only ones this week that have launched um, uh, DDR5 uh, ranges. Samsung kind of pushed out there with some even faster um, uh, DDR5 uh, frequency speeds they're reporting, but they're not at the formal release level as we're seeing here from 8.8. -8 -8, so I want to give them the lion's share of coverage this week. But of course, we'll talk more about the Samsung DDR5 modules and what they've been doing with five layer stuff maybe next week if we hear more about it. But this has been Data News of the week thank you so much for watching if you've enjoyed this click like if you want to stay abreast of everything happening in data then go click subscribe and the bell to be notified and otherwise i will see you next week